the dawn of time, plants have protected suburbia from the zombies. But now the world has changed. Welcome to Zomburbia. Hey guys, Andrew Renee here. I'm with Jeremy, and I finally got some hands-on time with yeah. Garden Warfare number two. Number two. So you guys have just announced this. We're we super excited about it. We're super excited. But you guys are kind of taking a pivot about it. It's not all about the planes this time. It's well, all about the zombies. Yeah, it is from a different perspective. You know, we have um, bad guys in our game who are really popular, uh, and so one of the things we wanted to do. Plants vs. Zombies traditionally has always been, the plants have things pretty under control, they're just there to defend against you know, attacks from Zomboss. We just tried to, we tried to ask ourselves, what would happen if Zomboss, even momentarily, won? And so that's kind of where you enter Garden Warfare 2, where he's taken over suburbia, uh, it, it, it looks completely different. He's decorated it the way he sees fit. Uh, he loves the color purple. Uh, so, you know, th there is a bit of a twist there, but it's also, that's led to us creating new ways to play the game and new characters as well. So it's been, it's been super fun. Well, let's talk a little bit about these new characters. Right. You have six new classes, three new plants, and three new zombies. We do. So let's start with the zombies. Which okay. one is your favorite? Oh, it's so tough. Um, I, I will say that the imp mech is really fun to play. So. We've taken the imp, who's traditionally very small and kind of weaselly, uh, and we've combined him with future mech technology, uh, which is totally normal and expected. It looks a little inspired by another EA game well, that had know, mechs we are in fans it. fans of games in general. <laughs> uh, but it is, it's something we thought, what would be really, really fun? So you could start by playing in, in the imp form. He's very fast, he's got rapid fire weapons, but very low health. So then when you call in your mech, it's the opposite. You, you're slow, but you're really powerful, um, heavy firepower, but you're a little less agile, so he's really, really fun to play in both forms. Um, also on the zombie side, we have uh, Captain Deadbeard, who is a zombie sniper. We uh, also have Super Brains, who is a zombie superhero. As you can see we're going totally just you know, mainstream <laughs> and expected here. Um, and on the plant side, we've got, I think, you know, I've got, all the plants are really cool. We've got Rose, who's an all-powerful sorceress, who's one of my favorite characters. Uh, we have uh, Colonel Korn, who's a r true run-and-gun, like, high-speed, high-rate-of-fire character. Uh, and then, you know, as we're as we're looking, uh, you know, at opportunities to, to build this, when we're building the imp mech, we thought, well, who he's going to be such a powerful character. He needs kind of a nemesis, someone who kind of matches him in, in strength. And so we've created a character called Citron, who is a cyberpunk bounty hunting orange from the future. Again, totally expected. Um, but he's one of the coolest characters, I think, that I've had an opportunity to work with because we just thought, what would be super awesome? And so he's, he has two forms. One is a ball form where he rolls around the map. The other, he um, he kind of turns into this four-legged turret and walks around on his orange sliced legs. Um, he can uh, he has a lot of really cool abilities that counteract the mech. So he's it's definitely, when, when they see each other on the battlefield, it's like, okay, I know who I'm going for. Um, it's been really fun, so. I always think the way that you guys animate the plan is always so fascinating. I remember the very first time I played with Chomp in the first game, yeah. and just like just like the way that his little body like moved around the map yeah. was always so like fun to watch. Yeah, and it's not your typical like you don't have two arms and two legs. So you, you, there's not a typical way to animate them. And what we really try to do is, is start with personality. So Chomper, for instance, you know, he's kind of. He's this big, brutish plant, but he's basically a puppy. Yeah. So when you look at his mannerisms, he's just happy to be there. He's kind of bobbing back and forth. So we really tried to continue that. You know, Rose is very elegant and sure of herself. Um, Citron is super confident and strong. Uh, you know, with the zombies, the zombies are traditionally pretty goofy, you know, and even Super Brains, who's very capable and powerful, I mean, he over moves. Uh, you know, so really trying to convey the personalities on both sides, it, it's so much of our game, right? So uh, you don't really know how a cyberpunk bouncing hunting orange is supposed to act. So for us, we get to create a lot of stuff just, you know, the way we think it would be the coolest and how, how can we bring out the personality in the best way. Absolutely. And you guys are introducing some new modes as well. We got to play Graveyard Ops today. That's right. So one of the big twists when we change the story around is that, you know, traditionally the plants have always been on the defense. Uh, this time around, the zombies are on the defense because momentarily, suburbia is theirs. So for the first time, they're like, ooh, okay, we've got to defend our house against the plants. So what that has led to, it's actually a much bigger deal than you would think. It leads to not only new ways to play 
the game, but new characters. So on the zombie side, we've always had our brown coats. So you have the basic brown coat. You've got the guy who wears the cone on his head. You've got the bucket guy. Uh, so you know kind of, okay, this is levels of armor. Well, the plants never had that. Right. Every plant has been unique and different. So we've created what, who we're calling the weeds. So there's, as you see in the demo, you know, the weeds come out in swarms. Uh, they move very quickly. And they're kind of our fodder enemies for the plant side. We've never had that. So in Garden Warfare 2, we're doing something very, very different. Also, you know, in, in the first game, you were able to plant plants in pots. Mm -hmm. So now, instead, since you're the zombies on defense, you can actually build Zombot robots and little terminals around the map to help you defend. So it leads to, you know, that story twist actually leads to very different ways to play the game. So it's pretty exciting for us. Please tell me at some point a dandelion pops up from the weeds. I think a lot of people forget that dandelions are weeds. No, I can't give away any secrets about <laughs> dandelions. Um, yeah, but it's it's going to be very interesting how we tackle all of that aspect. And I think you know once we are able to talk more about you know the game, there's going to be a lot of surprises like that though, where we really call out different parts of the plant's personality. So, you guys were talking about the response you got from the community after Garden Warfare yeah. was you know originally launched and how many people were playing. Six million players. You know that's a really big number. Yeah. And how is that figuring into you know what you guys are going to do with the launch of the sequel? Well, I mean, you know that that fan response and the way the players have reacted, we started listening to that right off the bat. And I think when we wanted to make a second game. That's where we started. You know, what are the players asking for? You know, what do they like? What don't they like? So not only are we listening to it, but it has gone straight into the second game. Um, the new modes, you know, uh, Graveyard Ops was the number one fan ask, for, you know, from the players of the original game. Okay, we started working on that right away. So we actually have a really good relationship of PopCat with the players. We, we listen to almost everything. And obviously, as game developers, it means a lot when people enjoy our game. So we try to include them in the process. So I would say that Garden Warfare 2 is a huge part of that. It's a combination of fan feedback and a really dedicated development team who wants to listen to that feedback. So it's, it's been a cool experience for us. Well, it was certainly awesome getting to play today. And I know you guys are adding in other things like solo mode and private matches and other cool features we that we will bring you guys more information about. But thanks again for talking with me today. And uh, we'll bring you guys more E3 coverage right here on Game Trailers.